What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 58 of Onshape. What we're making here is we're going to be using the pin slot mate feature, which we've never done before in this video series, um, just to introduce some things that maybe you haven't done yet. Once you start getting the realm of some real life objects, you will need to take in consideration uh, of how to do these other mates eventually. So if you want to, you can skip forward about the second half of the video just to see that mate, or if you want to make this part with me step by step, um, you can follow along right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to a new part studio, so create part studio, click on sketch, and we're going to go to this front plane right here. Go ahead and click on rectangle, hit R for rectangle, do that center point rectangle. I really like that center point rectangle over, click in the corners. Let's do a six inch by, let's do two and a half inch rectangle. And let's go ahead and put our circle in. So if you noticed, I started in the middle and then I dragged my cursor to the left. And if you can see there's some dotted lines. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit better. There's some dotted lines that appear. And so what it is is that I am automatically putting in that geometric constraint that the center of my circle is parallel or horizontal with the center of that vertex. Just some of those little quick things. Let's go ahead and dimension this circle. Let's make it two and a quarter. And let's go ahead and dimension that this distance be um, 1.5 inches. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our slot. Now there's a couple different ways you can make a slot. You can kind of play with these tangent arcs, center point arcs, and all this stuff. However, what I just like to do is make my rectangle and then fillet it. Now not fillet it, fill it. Okay, uh, our pin is gonna have a overall height of, let's make it a quarter inch. And for our slot here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a slot that is about the same distance as our rotation. So on my disc, I have my disc to be two and a quarter inch. So I'm gonna put my pin for my disc one inch from the center. And so what that's gonna do for me is that my rotation is gonna go one inch forward and then one inch backwards. So we need two inches in total for our total length of travel. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put this as two inches. Click a uh, green check mark. Oh, actually, I want to have done that yet. Uh, let's make sure everything else is good. Okay, the circle looks good. The rectangle, let's go ahead and dimension that. This be, uh, let's do 1.5. That looks good. We are fully constrained on this sketch. Now, as you start to do more complicated designs, you wanna make sure that your designs are fully constrained, just so that way you don't run into problems if you need to make edits on your assembly or when you're assembling, because um, you can find yourself that you end up shooting yourself in the foot a little bit downstream. Since we are gonna go have a pin system, let's go ahead and um, create that sketch. Let's go ahead and put our pin in. Our pin's gonna be a quarter inch, that looks good. Our pin is also gonna start with a distance from the center of the disc to be one inch. Ooh, that I see we run into a problem there and that's why we kind of uh, fixing around it. So let's, let's do one inch. Let's do, let's bump this disc up. Let's do 2.3, okay. Hit the green check mark. Nope, not yet. We're gonna fill at our edges. So you notice that my fillets overlap, and that's okay because the radius of our fillets need to be half our height. If you do half your height, you may create a nice little slot for everything to fit into. We're gonna need one more circle on over here. That way, when we create our two pins for our crank arm, they're gonna already be in the right position. Right as in left, right, and also right. Okay, we're looking good so far. If I've done this correctly, 
Oh, and I think there's one more thing I'm going to need to throw in there. We're going to need to throw in one more line. That way I can do this whole thing and hopefully only one sketch. We'll see if that worked. I might have to come back for it. Click green check mark and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our block of our base, which is going to be this right here. Let's give it a thickness of a quarter inch and hit the green check mark. I'm going to rename this piece. We're going to just name it um, block. Block base, whatever you want. I'm going to reactivate sketch one and then let's create our disk. So our disk is going to have all the features except for that hole for the pin slot. We're going to flip its direction, give it a depth of a quarter inch. Nope, we don't need to flip its direction. There we go. Hit the green check mark, and we have our disk. So I'm going to rename that as disk. All right, the last piece is going to be our crank arm, and we're going to have to do some little bit of finagling here to make sure this gets uh, works out all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude, but I have my sketch in my way, and I don't like this. So what you can do is we're going to make our parts one and two invisible. That way when I am making my pins, I know everything is exactly as I need it to be. Okay, let's go ahead and flip that. That way I'm not making my pieces overlap. There we go, that looks all right. And let's give that a depth of a quarter inch as well. Okay. So we now have got the arm of my crank arm, but I need those pins instead as well. So I'm going to click on extrude again, or shift E. I'm going to click on these two circles. Now you notice that a little bit, some weird stuff's happening. I want to add those pins to the crank arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my block and my disc Inactive again, I'm going to fix my depth, and then I'm going to click on Add. Add will means it's going to add to a part that's already there, and so by having my other parts inactive, it already said, hey, we think we know what you want to do with these pieces, and here you go. Okay, we are looking good. Let's go ahead and make all of our parts active again. We've fully modeled how we need to. The only thing we're going to do now is let's hide all planes is we're going to hop over to assembly and make our assembly. So I'm going to click on plus. We're going to click on create assembly. And we're going to insert all of this mess. And there we go. Like we do every assembly ever, I'm going to pull my pieces out just a little bit. That way they're not in the way while I'm doing my mates. And we're going to take our first piece, which is the block and we're going to fix it. Make sure it doesn't move. Let's go back and rename this piece too. Let's call this crank on. Okay. All right. Let's do some of our revolutes. So we know that the disc right here is going to revolute on its hole that we modeled it in. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, make sure you get to the center of that. Click the green check mark. There you are. Right. Now, if you noticed, and I did it pretty quickly, there are two different center faces. And one of those, I believe, is going to be because we have this cut out here on the right side, there is two centers of the face. There is the center considering the hole, and there's the center not considering the hole. And so what I found out is that if you choose the solid white one, the solid white one is the center of the face not considering the hole. If you choose this checkered one, it is the center of the face considering the holes, and it's a little bit askew. So we'll see if I can screw this up and see if we can see what we got going on here. So instead of choosing that one, I'm going to choose this one over here. And what we notice is that my disc is no longer aligned 
true center. And so if you get a little bit of that weird overlap there, that's how you fix that issue. Okay, now if everything's correct so far, I could just rotate, spin this around freely. And it's hopping around like a madman, but everything looks good. Okay, next one you have is our um, first pin is going to be another revolute make. Because we want this, this first pin right here to revolute freely, to rotate freely in this hole. So, there we go. Click the play. Everything's looking good. Hit the green check mark, and we are almost done. Now, that's a long way to just get to the pin slot, ain't it? All right, so what we're gonna do now is take our pin slot and have it to where this pin will rotate a little bit and have some translation as well. So here's how you select it. We're gonna do pin and then the slot. So we're gonna select the pin, however, to make sure we don't accidentally get the block. I'm gonna make it inactive. Zoom in, select my pin make my block active now, and then I'm gonna select my block right here. But I can't get that face, so hold on the control, shift key. There we go. Make it active again, hit the play. Now it's gonna do a little bit of this odd motion right here, and that's because that preview is not putting in consideration of all the other mates we've got in there as well. But if everything works well, we should be good to go. Uh -oh. I clicked on the block in the app. See, look there, I did it again. All right, let's click on the pin. And then now let's select our block. So there we go. Hopefully, there we got going on now. So here's what I did. Um, I accidentally selected the same part twice. And so we had a little bit of an error code. We just fixed it, made sure that in our mates, we're having two different pieces being mated together. All righty, right click, animate. And does it work? Huzzah. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've made our pin slot system. Does it go too far though? It does. Ah, man, let's fix it. So I'm gonna go back to my part studio. Let's go back to the sketch. Hit view normal two and figure out why our problem exists here. Let's bump this out. Let's do I think that'll solve our problem. Hit the green check mark, go back to my assembly, right click, animate, hit play. It's a little too far now, uh, but there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. We have taken our rotational motion converted to linear motion using the pin slot mate. Um, what we're gonna be doing next for the next couple of videos is we're gonna be using some of these other mates to make some other simple machines. Stay tuned, these videos are awesome. I'm looking forward to what we got for the next chunk. In the meantime, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.